Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I am doing art around the world. And for the month of February, I am doing Japan. And today I wanted to talk about Hanawa. And I also kind of want to give a content warning to this video. So today I'm going to be talking about pottery as it pertains to burial and tombs. And if this is difficult, this is a difficult topic for you right now. Um, please stop this video and I will talk to you tomorrow and I hope you have a wonderful day. If you've decided to stay. <laughs> Hi! So today I'm talking about Hanawa, which literally translates into clay cylinder or <clears throat> clay ring. And these terracotta clay objects were created in the 3rd to 7th century during the Kofu period of Japan. Now, these cylinders were the earliest formed Hanawa, and they were created by taking molds of clay, coiling it, and building the shape up layer by layer. And it was smoothed out with a wooden paddle, and this clay was water-based, it was unglazed, and it was created in a low fire, which means that it was a lower temperature. And some of these were actually painted and dyed on, but the earliest ones were not. Now, so these early cylindrical ones, they are hollow, and they are about a meter to about three feet tall. And as time passed, the Hanawa became more complex as the Kofu time period reached the 5th century. So at this time, animals, people, and houses began to be created. This is one of my favorite Hanawa houses I had to show you. So there were horses, dogs, chickens, deer, monkeys, rabbits, sheep. Um, the people that were created were maidens, musicians, farmers, shamans, and warriors. So this is probably one of the more favorite, famous ones, and it is probably one of the most intricate ones. And you can still see the cylindrical shapes as this warrior is hollow. And he is wearing an armor called Kiko, and he has a sword, there's a scabbard, there's a bit of a broken bow. He has a wrist sort of um, guard for doing archery. And with this piece, because it is so detailed, they can see that the iron plates were joined with rivets and some of it was joined and tied together with leather string. And so this gave them a pretty good idea of what warriors look like during this time. So the question is, what exactly were Hanawa for? Now, this is one of the largest um, monuments, tombs of the Kofu time. And they reached a huge size. This is the tomb of Emperor Natoku in Osaka Prefecture. And it is a keyhole shape. This was a burial mound. This light green is actually a moat. And this is about, they, they, it's about half a mile long. And let's see, do I have a metric conversion? Um, I don't. So the, oh, 486 meters. And on this burial mound, the Hanawa were placed on top. And this sort of funerary monument is so large, they believed as many as 15,000 Hanawa were placed on top. And they think there are all these theories 
as to why the Hanawa were here. And sometimes later on, they weren't on top of the mound, but they were formed around the mound as sort of marking the area of the burial site. And some of these theories are that the soul of the deceased has gone into the Hanawa and it resides inside. Some think that the armor and weapons Hanawa will drive away evil spirits. Some think that the horse and animal shaped Hanawa that are sort of arranged in a line are believed to be part of a sending off ceremony. So they believe this is part of a ceremonial piece. And some believe that the Hanawa contains its own spirit and guards the deceased. Um, whatever the case may be, this, these were a show of wealth and status because look at the amount of labor and time needed to create them when this gentleman alone had 15,000. So eventually the tomb size in this time period shrunk and they think it's just because this wasn't sustainable and they needed the farmland. And so as soon as the keyhole sort of shape of these monuments, these funerary monuments changed, the Hanawa ceased to be built. But today the Hanawa, these pieces are prized because they have huge historical significance. There was no writing system in Japan at the time these were created. So the Hanawa show the insight to the culture and of that time period. Here we have three different women and three different gentlemen and they're all in that cylindrical hollow shape. And here are a couple horses. This is from an archeological site and here is where they found them all along the path. I will link all the different articles that discuss and talk about Hanawa and show pictures because This warrior has a bunch of really cool stuff on the back. And I want to talk about today in modern times. So Hanawa can be found in trading cards, movies, TVs, and video games. And one of the earliest renditions of Animal Crossing from 2001 had something called a gyroid. And they were sort of a decorative furniture figure. And... The recent versions of this game, this character is sort of called, called a Lloyd, and these gyroids in the Japanese version of this game are called Hanawa. Here he is, buried in a hole, drop item, unearthing gyroids. Here it says gyroid fragment. This is all related to Hanawa. So even in today's modern times, we are still pulling and looking at things from the past, from these beautiful pottery pieces that existed so very long ago. I think this is absolutely fascinating and wonderful. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.